Great. Hello, everyone. Back again. Uh, this week's painting is going to be a little study of studiousness. Um, we've got a rather interesting angle poise lamp. Uh, a simplified dictionary. Um, uh, a nice green book of the green hills of Africa. Uh, and uh, some glasses and a newspaper with a puzzle. So uh, I've still I've kept the same colours from last week, but I've gone for a black shiny foreground. Uh, you can't see all the details of the glasses on the newspaper here, but uh, if we have a little look, with, um, oh, no, it doesn't seem to know it exists now. If you try going to the phone, I don't think. You'll Technology works it feels like it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I could do is I could probably do a little zoom in here. We can have a little look at what I'm looking at. Let's focus on that maybe. There you are. So we've got the glasses there, we've got the book there. Angle poise, and there's a there's a mood to the the lighting there, which is quite fun. You know what? I reckon that canvas can go up a notch. How's that? Okay, so I guess I'll get right to it. Um, now I want to do something again with colours here. Uh, I've got two light sources. There isn't much light falling on the um, on the the shade of the angle poise. So I'll see if I can change that up a little bit. That's more like it. Uh, but there are some nice sort of reflections from the other side. And if I get those just right, then hopefully uh, it will communicate just enough. <laughs> Actually, that is a good point. I wonder if this was here, how much that had come across quite a lot. So I might exaggerate that, or uh, get another panel or move the panel. But I can play around with this, so I don't have to be absolutely glued to, to what's there at the beginning. Uh, but just to start off with, let's get a little tonal thing in. So it makes a bluey black. I'll just have a think about this composition. It's a good ratio left to right. I quite like where that paper is. About the same distance across to the other side. So that line is going to be roughly down the middle. Roughly, he says. Uh, if I cut this across, I'm going to have this here. This. So, some general bookness. Two 
negative shapes. So that's going to be around there, that'll be around there. Straighten this off. Got a construction line that can go through the top corner of that up there, so that's, that's about right. Maybe it'll move down a little bit. Um, and the same thing the other way, so it's going to meet that somewhere in the middle. There's, there's roughly my angle poise. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. That'd be fine. Let's put them together. Um, more book. Something like that, anyhow. So once I've got a few shapes in, I can actually make a judgement as to whether I like this or not. Um, let's see where those glasses end up. That's the right kind of region. How's this going to look? Yeah, so a quick bit of drawing, but I'm fairly happy with where where things are going. Uh, there's these nice shadows there. That's the edge of the newspaper. And that can wander off, I guess. Got this edge of the table here, which I think I'll keep. And I've got this crossword on there too, which will go about here. So we're on the puzzle page. Let's go and brush, handy. Yeah, all needs to move up slightly. <laughs> Which is fun. I was thinking about using a red as a um, as a drawing colour, and I think I'll do that now. A little bit of a lizard in some cadmium and some of the leftover black, and I can move the whole thing up one. So I could take each point. It's just got to be parallel. Um, same thing there. So that's the arms of the glasses. Let's move the whole thing up slightly. Now I've been looking a bit at Scottish colourists and they had this nice effect of having outlines so that there's something quite deliberate about placement of colours and what have you. This is all still quite vague so I'm not being too fussy about that but uh, that can be parallel. And that. It's going to finish about here. Ah. Yeah, like I said.
สนาHappy with where that is. So I'm making these decisions quite early on. This is slightly confusing, so we'll get rid of that as well. Now I'm using a fairly well-sized canvas here, um, so it's not it's not absorbing the paint. It's uh, it's still quite free to move around, which can be a challenge if you really you know if the wet paint shifting about puts you off. But it's quite useful when you want to change your mind. Now the interesting thing about that is going to be it's going to be depicting how the light falls, and and the light is a sort of a substance almost, which is kind of how it feels. I know mean, that's not what it is, but it is kind of how it feels. And if uh, yeah, if I can do that, um, so who did that in a in notable way? The futurists. Were quite interested in that. There's quite a famous picture by Bala uh, of a, a street lamp with all these sort of coloured sort of energies in being emitted from it. Um, it's quite compelling. Um, if you reckon you can, Steve, you could probably find an image of it and, uh, <laughs> and pop it up. So, are we coming through on different channels and things? Uh, <coughs> yes, we are. We're Good stuff. Coming through. Hey. Uh, coming through. Um, um, uh, Matthew says hello. Hi, Matt. Insanity for tea? Uh, is that the username? Yeah. No, uh, that's new to me, so welcome. Uh, Antonia Heath? Oh, hi Antonia. Yes, hello. Yes, uh, she went to Salvador Dali's old house the other day. She was saying that he got an interesting, an interesting way of painting large canvases without uh, moving his chair. And then she described it as uh, a pulley system where the canvas goes below the floor level. Right, yeah, yes. Which I have seen. Yes, uh, I've seen those as well. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So the whole thing moves around and your chair just stays still. Yeah. Like those uh, plotters where there's a pen which is fixed, but the paper moves left and right and up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Right, so I have a composition now and I need to populate it with colour. Um, but before that, probably with tone. So I'm going to go back to my... Uh, my darks here. I'm going to put that back in as a vertical. It's sort of starting to lean over a bit. There is. What's that doing? Oh, that is a bit lower down. So this one needs to be lower down as well. So actually, that's good. Yeah, 
Yes, very interesting man, Dali. There's a sort of a, there's a slight stigma against him in the art world because, because of the fascination he holds for adolescence, I think. There's this sort of, uh, what would you call it? You know what, I can't come up with words for it, but there's, there's certain qualities that I think we all go through when we're adolescents, and especially when we learn to paint and draw, where we are interested in sort of detail and the fantastical and uh, the nature of symbolism, really, trying out building different kinds of symbols. Um, something most adolescents have in common is a, a kind of a unique language that they develop with their peers, which is not understood by anyone else. And, and it probably is never understood by anyone else. And if it were, then it wouldn't have that sort of magical private quality that it has. So, in a sense, there's a yeah, there's something something lovely about that being just just belonging to whatever group creates it. And I think most people have that experience in some way or another. Um, but with art, uh, Salvador Dali's art looks looks like the uh, the musings of a It looks like he's pretending to be deeper than he really is, but within it there is a certain cleverness. There's a there's a there's a knowing of what he's what he's doing and how sometimes it's puerile and sometimes it's silly, but there's an embracing of that, and so it's sort of everyone's always a bit torn with it. Um, Do you think there's something that um, uh, it, it can seem a little bit um, uh, maybe? Slightly gimmicky, the yes. sort of the trompe l'oeil thing, and once yeah, yeah. you've got it, a bit like magic eye pictures. Yeah. Oh, is it swans or is it elephants upside yeah. down? Oh, that's so clever. Yeah. Which, which I, which I don't agree with. I, I could see how it could, it could seem quite sort of superficial. Yeah. Well, it is superficial, but that's also kind of the point of it. That's the point of it is that uh, the surrealists were playing around with this idea that we are the victims of some kind of artifice. And somewhere in our dreams is a deeper truth, which is more meaningful to who who we are and how we exist in the world. Um, yeah, how's this going to play out? Okay, I could get too fiddly with this if I'm not careful. Yeah, I already have. Right, that needs to be lighter. And again, this is all on a grey canvas, so there's an opportunity for all of this to get lighter, but I should have a fairly good balance of light and dark going on. Where, where I know what belongs where. Uh, harder to place in some places than others. It's reds really tricky. You know, tonally this background and foreground probably aren't that different. Oh, there they are. There they are, very obviously are. Here, where the light's shining off it. Very tough to say. Anyhow, I don't, I don't want to get too caught up with the drawing on this. I think I've spent far too many years obsessing about that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, but there's an image there. There's an image there that I quite like as well. Uh, so I'm going to think about how these colours work together. And how they work on the palette. And kind of trust that, I think. Um, I might do a nice little trick as well. Of doing... A light, a dark, and a, and a mid-tone, and then I can put the colours in that ballpark, and I don't have to be too strict about tone. So I've got white that end, I've got black that end. Let's put a mid-tone in here somewhere. So is that showing up on the palette mixing? Should we do a, a close-up? Yeah, let's go to the palette, the palette cam. Yeah. 
I can put them together as well. So I can put the white here. So I don't want it to be completely shiny white. I might want some highlights. And I want to express the quality of the light as well. Which I'll do more with temperature than with uh, tone. Um, there's a black over here. I don't want to go completely black, but definitely at the darker end. And then here in the middle, I want it to be somewhere... So there's a distinct dark against light there. And there's also a distinct light against dark here. And I think that's roughly in the middle. Uh, and now if I'm mixing a colour, I just have to figure which family it belongs to. So certainly the book, those browns. And I want these to be mostly warm colours against the, the, the cool background, which I'm probably not going to be completely literal about. Um, So that's dark for the shadows. That is dark for the whole thing. Yeah, so the books are medium tone. The green books are medium tone. Uh, the red's going to be at the darker end, but possibly medium tone for that stripe down here and on the surface here. And then there's some nice reflections and things. But obviously the newspaper's light. And I guess the background's approaching light as well. Yes, the background is light because tonally this is only slightly lighter than the shadow behind. So I guess I put the, the background colours in light. Um, so if I get cracking with that, let's have a little go. You know what, I'm going to get some mixing white out as well. A bit more substance and. Um, bit less tinting strength. I've become quite a fan of this. I used to spend quite a bit of time mucking around with fillers and oils and stuff like that. Uh, but this kind of comes ready made so I'm all in favour of that. Right, let's go. Let's go with the background colour to begin with. And again, it can be. Let's get a bit of that green in. Let's get a bit of that blue in. See how much we can get in before it starts going past these light colours here. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm just going to. Let's make a little dab of. Uh, what remember that? Let's pop a bit of that in. Tiny bit of red, tiniest bit. It's gone a bit brown now. It's quite hard to see what colour that actually is because since I've put the, it's still kind of green, but since I put the red in, I saw it go less green. So now I'm seeing the red in the green and I created in my mind's eye a thing called reddy green, which doesn't actually exist in the world does exist in the mind of the artist who's just put red paint in their green paint because uh, you <laughs> saw it work. If I put it up against there, but here, that's pretty good. Um, could go a little bit bluer probably. Not too much. Uh, so that gives me a gives me a starting point. There's a slightly greener one next to it. Pretty subtle. And I'm starting with these lights because a lot of the a lot of it's going to stay in a high key. Yeah, just trying to get the personality of that colour. Yeah, it's going to definitely get a bit greener than that, but not much. I quite like them being quite neutral. Uh, because of the strong reds, I don't want other colours really arguing with it, but I can turn the green up as it goes along. But there's my, uh, yeah, there's those. I've got this red, which is really going to be almost that bright. I think it is pretty much that bright. Maybe even slightly yellowy, where it's at its brightest.
yeah, cools down into a crimson a little bit more as it darkens off. And that, again. That's my darker red. It's probably a bit too dark. back in it. It'll be a bit too red again. <laughs> uh, tricky one. And then it goes, yeah, so that's sort of closer to that sort of tone. It's a bit lighter. And then it'll go darker again. And that, that is going to match quite nicely with this here. So what else are we going to need? We're going to need this brown colour, which is pretty much the same, but mm. a bit yellower. So I can use raw umber for that and just add as much red as I need to warm it up the right amount. A bit more red. And again, quite dark, and then there's a lighter one. This is where I'm going to have to mix a colour for the light itself. And that's going to be quite yellow. So let's give that a go. I'll draw a little bit of this green yellow over here. It's very pale. Yeah, so that will change that family of colours. And yeah, that'll do. So if I take a bit of that brown and a bit of this yellow, I do pretty much get the colour for the side of the the spine of the book. Um, what else can I get? So I haven't got my green yet. So it's not going to be much different to this. Keep using this one. Let's pop it over here. Pop a little bit more blue in it. It's quite a dull green. And I can turn up the colour there because I want I want a fight between that and the red. Oh, they don't get on at all. Hey, um, but it's a pretty accurate version of what's there. So I can make a bluer version and a paler version. So let's do a paler version first. Let's take a bunch of that yellow light. And that's the spine of the book right there. And let's get some of that dark and pop a little bit more blue in it. Just a little bit. That's too much. A bit more light. I'll keep for the moment. Between these colours, yeah, the other thing I don't have is a shadow colour. And I want that shadow colour to kind of around, be around the opposite of this yellow, which is a greeny yellow. So I'd be looking at a sort of a ready purple, I guess. Let's put that over here. There you are, slightly on the red side. Huh. Uh, that's too much of that. Just a little bit. Uh, that's completely off. It's way too purple, so I'm going to put green in it until it behaves itself. It does make rather a splendid colour though. Oh, I like that. There you are. Purple and green makes blue look. <laughs> That's fun. Who knew? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun one. There's a little bit of a sort of a magic trick in, the, in classes to uh, use secondary colours to mix primary colours. But it does work. It's just a much lower chroma, obviously. You can't mix bright versions of them. No, it's got a bit of green left over. A little bit of filler. Let's put some of that light in and see what it does. as I go along but for the moment. Oh, hey, wake up. For the moment it's just trying out this, this family of colours as it were. Uh, a lot of light going down here. bluish one. Okay, let's do the greenish one there. It barely looks any different. But this is a surface I can work more light into, uh, more colour into as well. There you go. There's an awful lot of light on the other side of that shadow. I'm going to get a lot of contrast on there. And then dark colours into what's left. Now, what else can we do? We can do that newspaper, which is going to have a little bit of the light colour on it. So I'll just use a brush mix, pop it into this pale colour here. Subtly try and work my way around the glasses, roughly. And whilst keeping the drawing simple, don't get too carried away. Yeah, what's that doing? And so I, I wanted to make a little narrative here, a little kind of a visual story. I'm not too fussed about it, sort of having a, an obvious meaning. That, that's not really what I mean by a narrative. It's more of a, a situation you can imagine yourself in that could turn into something very exciting or something very mundane. It could be something out of a, a thriller. It could be something out of the, the most uneventful of days. But when we're painting, I think we're, we're dealing with something else. We're dealing with the, the nature of what it is to sort of be, um, be things in the world, yeah. I that, can't think of a better way of putting that. So that will have to do. Um, okay, this is already starting to sort of happen in its small way. While that's got the light on it, I'll take the end of this. on the pages of that book. Uh, a little bit to the side. And there's going to be a little bit down here as well. Okay, we 
we're going to the darker colour now. It's a bit more like it. We can shove some of that on here. Not dark enough. Okay, there's a colour on there. Sort of a bluey light on here. I'm getting too carried away now, it needs to be a more specific. Um, again, a bit more blue over there. Go for that shadow, pop that in. It's quite quick. Some of that under there. And maybe a little bit on the side as well. I'm just seeing if these colours work together. I'm not fussed about the finish at the moment. Um, yeah, there'll be some of that in the shadow as well, but not as dark. Again, I'm starting to get carried away. I should be more interested in what the colour can do than whether it's accurate, because that just isn't that important. Okay, put this green that goes on here. Weirdly, does work quite well. It's a bit stronger than the green that's there, but I quite like that. I want it to do that. Because, like I said, it's going to fight with the red. And then have a bit of this down the side. Flashing. So, who uh, who have we got in, if anyone? I think we've, we've mentioned all the names. Ah, right, okay. Well, that's good. It's nice to have a few folks. Just uh, all straight off the blocks. Along. Is that just people who commented? Or, uh, yes. Right. Well, if anyone's out there and they, um, they have a two penneth to put in, don't be shy. Let's go to this blue. That's not it. Kind of already had it here, didn't I? Okay. Now, really, I've got quite a strong canvas texture here, and I'm not. That is not a thing I want to keep. But as long as I'm spreading the paint this thin, it's, it's not going to change. So. At a certain point I've got to start mixing in earnest. Uh, but the last thing to try out before it all goes together is the red. And I can kind of test that. This middling red along here. I didn't draw that carefully, so that's probably wrong. There you go. Darker red around here. dark red in there and there and in here but it's also a really intense red but I'm yeah again I'm exaggerating that to a certain extent uh, for dramatic effect yeah a lot of red in the gap here Ah, missed, missed my line. Not important. Uh, oh, bit of that in there. Where else is dark? Uh, in, probably in here. Bit of that. Bit there on the side. I already did that, didn't I? A little bit in there. Oh, 
here. Okay. Now, let's go back to this yellow, this red. And they've got a bit of that going on in here. bit is the very bright red which is going to go down here. More white in it just to make it more opaque. I already put a bit of yellow in. But there we go. It's going to have quite a lot of that on here as well. From a compositional point of view, you could almost leave it like that. But obviously, I'm not going to. One thing I will do is do a slightly darker version of that green. And that is going to make that red spring out. Okay, that's too much there, but here. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. That's a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, well, let's do the lighter version. That spreads into it. And then the yellow version at the side here. I hope I can remember how I did all of this. to create a hard edge. Okay, where are we at? Borrow a bit more of that from here as well. Now this should give me a context and I can start to mix some proper paint and make start to make this do what I want it to. Oh, has it gone out of focus? It's been out of focus the whole time. Oh, Alright, that's okay. Right. It does feel like this camera's always out of focus though. Look at that. It can do it. Really simple at the moment. Yeah. I mean, my uh, my lights aren't perfectly balanced, but uh, without having everything on a dimmer, so you can balance them all out. <laughs> I'm kind of kind of stuck with that. Uh, hmm. No, there's nothing I can do about it. I could do with lowering it down a bit, but. There you go. But yeah, in terms of like, you know, recreating the the essence of that image, I think it works pretty well. Soften some of this in as well. We'll put our harder harder edges in afterwards. Hmm. No, I might keep this quite short tonight because I have a bit of a cold. Um, so I don't want to overdo it. But yeah. Just looking at <laughs> got a groovy from Antonia. Oh, yes, it is my spirit. Yeah, I could really do with one of those, um, but I don't really work big enough for it to be uh, necessary most of the time. I think if you're doing a 20 foot canvas, that whole thing of the, the pulley ropes and the, the gap in the floor, 
goes without saying. You can't really concentrate on being up a ladder and paint at the same time. They don't go. Um, if I look back at the the palette now, the um, yeah, the the colours and how they sit together are starting to. I've got these two greens. I've got a warm green and a cool green. Uh, the cool green's a bit a bit overdone, really, but I quite like it. Um, Yeah, I think once the reflections start going in as well, I can have a bit of fun with that. Uh, but I definitely need much, much thicker paint. I'm going to lay it on quite in pasto. Um, yeah, how are we doing for time? I did my. Uh, Just gone quarter to two. So yes, if you haven't joined us before, it's always a, uh, a lot of guesswork and figuring stuff out as I go along. So it's not it's not um, meant to be educational. It's meant to be entertainment and sort of sharing my my studio time with uh, anybody who fancies dipping into it. So it's very nice to have you along. Thank you for joining us. Now I'm going to do some proper mixing now. Uh, so if we can go over to the palette cam. I'm going to start chucking some real quantities on, uh, which is going to mean a bit more of that red. Stick some more yellow in it. And a little bit of white, wasn't there? Got a good chunk of that. And that's my that's my shoutiest colour. Right there. Still not loads, enough for a few marks really, but um, when it comes to the yellow, for example, the, the light colour, I'm gonna need a ton in that. yellow is going to go a long way. I'm going to need quite a bit of it. Um, same kind of thing with these greens. I've got this yellow here. If I go back to that, put some blue in it. So on the yellow side, Grey still. I need. I'm going to need a greyer version as well. That's like enough for one mark there. So let's do that and that, and then a bit of this blue. Let's see what happens. impatient but nevertheless uh, seems to have got there that's a better quantity of paint now I can take some of that and I can make the highlight color that goes on the front a bit of mixing white a bit of titanium white a little bit of a little bit of yellow Okay, that'll do for that, I guess. 
now. Well, I'm still thinking in greens. And I've got the blues as well. So let's make a load of that pale green over here. I've used a bit of viridian. That's not going to be enough. Nowhere near. There we are. That is a very crisp green. It hasn't got any of that yellow light in it yet, but when it does, it will come to life, especially around the lamp. So we've got cool there and warm colours here, so between the two of them. Yeah, so let's do the same thing with a blue. Again, I've got a bit of that purple in it too. I know it doesn't really have it in there, but we'll push it back. And again, a bit of green. That's probably all of it. Load the palette with a bit more Taylor signing green. Don't need much, it's very powerful. I'm going to mix a little weaker version over here. I can use to add to mixes. So just what's on the knife will shift that blue. Yeah, more of that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I'm going to need some shadow colours to go with it. go over here. Let's get some of this purple and some of this green. Remember that it mixed a rather strange blue. That's too much green so that didn't. But I'll put that to the green side. Put it over here. Give it a bit more purple. Let's push it back a bit. Yeah, that's rather good for that shadow colour, I quite like that. Um, the more purple colour, again, I'm running out of alizarin now. So you don't need a ton of these colours. To mix your shadows, but... No, way too much green again. Let's put some blue in it. And then add some of this red. And a bit more of it in. What's that doing? This is starting to turn into a rather interesting blue, which I like in the family of things. But I don't want too many strong colours. But it's close enough to the green and cool enough that it will stay out of the way. It should be quite useful for some of the shadows. do I need? Oh yeah, the book. So again, I've got this raw rumbo over here. Let's put a bit of red in there. Warm it up. I especially like that as a, as a shadow colour, but I'm going to Make the shadow a bit greener. First of all, let's take some of that away. Mix a slightly lighter one. A bit of that light over there. That 
should do it. Where is that? In the ballpark of where I was there. Yes, it is. Happy with that. Um, I'm going to need more of it. Or am I? Hmm. can always mix more if I need it. Now we're coming back to these reds again. There's really quite a lot of paint down here. That's a very dark red. I'm going to borrow a bit of that purple to put in it. A bit more blue. And that go here and at a certain point it's going to cross over into the actual sort of blue side of things. Let's have a bit more of that, a little bit of red. Yeah, so that's going to be my, my black that's waiting there. Um, that blue I'm ha uh, red I'm happy with, so we'll have a bit more of that. I've used up all my raw umber now, so I'm going to have to do that again. So there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of paint to go down to get this quantity of colour. There's quite a nice pile pile of colours on the uh, on the palette now, and I can be fairly confident of them. Ow. <laughs> uh, well, because I tested them out beforehand. Now, when they start to go on, I'm going to find that find new ones as well. There'll be other colours I hadn't really thought of, but there'll be interactions of the colours that are here. Well. Oh, I had a bit of alizarin in it before, didn't I? That livened it up. Which again, I've run out of on the palette. seems to have wandered off. Maybe I put too much raw umber in it. Oh well. A bit more alizarin. That could be a nice little colour all of its own. And then a bit more cadmium. Let's see what that does. There it is. <laughs> That's the previous one. All culminating in this kind of fire engine red at the at the top there. Um, hmm. What else have I forgotten? There's the colour of the top of the books, this reflection, so I need some of that shadow colour, which is kind of like what I've got there, but let's make it a bit more purpley. Let's put it down here where I started. So this is my purpley dark. So I want these warm colours, but I want cool colours around them. So I'm going to make the base here a cool colour. And put a little bit of white in there. And then, yeah, I can kind of mix that on the surface as I go along. Is that too too blue. No, I think that's going to be pretty close. A little bit brown, a little bit. A little bit more neutral. There you are. Fairly happy with that. Okay. Um, 
Well now my pallet is set up and loaded and I think I've got everything I need on it. Then, ooh, ping. Then yeah, I think I'm ready to chuck some paint on. Uh, but I will do that after I've had a short break. <laughs> Keep you waiting. It's exciting now, isn't it? So uh, I've got a nice little time lapse. Uh, Again, I'm going to make some new ones soon, so apologies if you've seen this one before. But uh, chance to go and make a cup of tea and um, have a little break. Please don't leave. <laughs> we'll see you in, in uh, 10 minutes or so.
back, back again. Uh, so yeah, ready to, to start chucking some paint on this now. I'm thinking of risking a very dangerous procedure, which is lowering the light. I'm going to attempt it. So I hope if this goes disastrously, at least it's entertaining for you all. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. This will fall into pieces. It's all a bit deadly, this. <laughs> Hey, here we go. Now I have the magic sharpie that holds it in place. And after that, there's nothing. Oh, hang on. That kind of needs clamp needs to come down. At a certain point, it should just stop. Likewise, hopefully that's better now. Well, it's going to keep going. Or is it? Let's hope. Let's hope that that will do it. Um, I'll hook this up here. Oh. That wants to, doesn't want to play. <laughs> there we go. Very neat and tidy. Uh, is that somewhat better lit now? Yes, that's some improvement, isn't it? Um, I'm working on a smaller canvas than normal today. I'm working on a uh, 12 by 16. There's a little wedge that goes under there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So we just have to cross our fingers and hope. Ah, is it still? I think it's still still creeping downwards. Oh, there it is. I'll tell you what. I'll use this. Spatula and see if that works. <laughs> so this is this is quite exciting, really. Will there be spatula madness? Well, who knows? We could do a bit of spatula madness now, it wouldn't hurt. You don't want to overdo it. We were just discussing Battle of the Planets and how um, yeah, it has zero effect. That's how little paint I've put on, so that tells you something. Um, and um, every time on Battle of the Planets, they, uh, they turned into the big phoenix thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, it's too long and complicated to explain. And also, I can't really remember it properly. Uh, it wasn't particularly important to me, but I do remember there were people in spaceships and then they all joined together into this big phoenix thing which would be immensely powerful uh, and it always it always happened there was never there was never an episode where they didn't have to do that it was necessary every single episode hey the boy races are out also necessary yeah it is isn't it you know, it is a Monday, I mean, what else have they got to do? Oh, wakey wakey. brushes here. I kind of want good brush shapes to make this work so I'm going to start big. Uh, I'm going to start with this blue and I'm going to load that brush up nice and fat. I'm going to hold it up for you so you can see it. Oh, 
not perfectly in focus, but there you go. Um, and that, when I put it on, I go for the brightest bit first, which is around here. I'm changing the angle of the brush, so it's laying it on really thick, like a, well, like a spatula. Don't get overexcited. Um, I'm going to use artistic license to move that um, move that back panel backwards um, so it moves the shadow slightly but not by too much there we, are. we get the edges where we want them and then it's going to be soft edges here so I can go even lighter and just brush it in and there will be some yellow to hit that as well so while that's the same colour on the brush put a bit of that in here like that Side here too. A little bit in there. Then it gets bluer. So I've got this other blue behind. Now have I done it in all the places it needs to go? Already, that's got this solidity, which um, which is it should help it as it goes along. I'm going to take a bit of that dark colour and mix it in, and see how much of a shift that is. We're putting it on the surface, and actually, that's okay. And as it comes down and works in. It's going to start to spread the paint a little bit thinner, so I need to mix up a bit more somewhere in between those two colours. There you are. That's going to go in here as well. and around the edges of up this bit yeah, where else ok let's pick that up let's put it here and let's put some of this black in it and that should be a sympathetic colour that goes in the reflection there. Anywhere else where that goes. Mm, probably would have a bit here, but no, maybe not. That doesn't quite go over that far. That's pretty much it. I'm going to put a few little dashes in into this. A few horizontals, which will sort of give it a sense of being a flat surface uh, and have a bit in there as well which might just show through from the underneath right and then I can lighten it a bit more let's go back to this let's give it a bit more light around here yeah that'll do it Again, wanders in here a little bit. That's fine. Um, right, let's get to the shadow colour. Let's get some more of that blue. And I want it to be quite strong colours, this. I think the colour's going to do more work than, um, than the tone, in a way. So 
Let's see if that works in here, which it does. So that, that greenness, that's playing nicely. Again, it doesn't have to get too thick here. Some fairly thick paint above it, so that will probably do. We'll have a bit of that in here as well. So that can travel across. Um, yeah, I'm also going to need that for the shadows up here. Which are going to be quite strong up there and go into a darker colour at the top, which will sort of blend down. And again, get a bit thicker there. In fact, probably have to use a knife for that. Let's get some of that dark, let's put a bit of that light into it. Mix up a thicker colour. And we can really paste that on a bit. Let's see what that does. Oh, there we go. It's a nice sort of mid in the middle kind of thing. Um, I don't want too much difference between one side and the other. I don't want to sort of really really make a thing of that. So that line down the middle and that should match nicely with these which it does I think and also kind of breaks up at the edges like that yeah happy with that and we'll build down at the bottom that'd be fine so still quite a lot of canvas texture going on there I really want to turn that up. I can sort of paste it in like this. Turn that colour up. Same thing here. You notice the, the angle of the brush is sort of allowing it to, to go on that bit thicker. Yeah, and the strokes are quite clearly visible. Um, once I've got that bit done, <laughs> still worried about me back from last week. Okay, let's go into this light. And I've got this light. I've still got this dark on the brush, so I'm not. I'm working my way towards the light a bit. Uh, so in here. this margin, this border. That will do for that. Paste this on here. And again, really quite a solid thick paint. It's still not thick enough. There's a proper scoop of it there. How's that working? There you go. Oh, naughty. I don't really want it to be sort of super piled high, like highly textured, but I do want it to have a particular kind of density. Is that a sort of wand of a cross? Yeah, it darkens a bit as it goes up here, so before I do too much more. thicker there as well. There we 
get to the lights around here. And again, I'm not going too thick here because I'm going to want to put some of that yellow into it. So it's more going to be wandering around here. And then the dark, and again the same thing with the darks where the, the darker shadow bits come in. So we're back to the light here. It's a nice light edge. Again, like I say, that's going to be a little bit darker, but at the moment. So if I get some of this thicker green again, it's a job for the knife here. And a lot of this, it comes down to confidence in the colours. So that's mixing on the surface, but it's also getting quite flat, so I want to be careful of that. I get some of this pasted in around the edges. I'll let that edge break up so that I can uh, keep some of that red coming through those lines which is kind of artificial but also sort of effective um, again I don't want it to be super thick around the edges so yeah when it comes up here it definitely darkens down but I'll keep it clean keep it as a clean color as well when it comes to it so not too worried about it um, right so with this green below let's try some of that in there it's suitably strong ah here we are there's definitely a bit in there and again Get some of this black uh, mixed. Now there's a very strong temptation to harden up these lines, but I'm going to try and resist it. That one I will. <laughs> This is interesting. I want that to be quite deliberate and precise, that area there. I can go over a lot of these. That's going to have a bit in there. Let's pop that in. Um, right, let's come back to that shadow colour. Too light, too dark. There we go. Let's see what this is doing. Right, these need to be closer together. Again, get that a bit thicker. Paste that on here, and then it will get gradually paler as it goes in. So we'll shift it a bit at the bottom of that. And when it gets to here, it almost completely fades out. And the last bit, I'll go back to that light. 
hopefully I'll get away with this with the same brush. I'll go back to that light and this time I'm going to get a whole load of the colour of the actual light and start putting it on here. And where that mixes in start to describe the nature of the light coming out of the lamp. We're also going to get this very strong contrast at this edge and this is going to be super important and have uh, quite, a, quite a thick surface. Sort of a, yeah, so there is a light present in that. The ones into here as well. While I've got that, I'm going to go across to this green here. Or should I do the book first? Yeah, I think I'll do the book first. I'll keep that handy. Let's start off with my darkest brown. That's ooh, lovely. Chocolatey. So we've got this warm, dark colour in there. Put a little hint of it coming down as well. Not too much detail. Um, different one up here. That's the shadow of that book. Oh, it's a lot redder when it goes on. And then, this is interesting, this is reflecting this light colour. So I'm going to mix a bit of that together and see, see how that works. And go even bluer than that, I think. It's quite fun, and then darkens off a bit as it goes back towards the edges. Like that. I use that same one for this bit of the binding at the far side. And then let's go into this deep red. It's going to come in there. There we go. Now I'm going to want to put more paint on top of this when I'm done, so I'm not going to get too carried away. I have to avoid lines as well, just thinking shapes, proper painting. Resist the urge to draw, however seductive it might be. Okay, don't want to get too fussy about it. And then similarly, that's got another light that kind of I'm going to take it from here and see how this works. That does it. There we go. And they blend in. And I'll put the lettering on afterwards. 
There we go. Now, what I didn't do is get all the way to this very pale colour, but if I go in with some of that yellow, this should do for the pages. Almost. It's even yellower than that. Should do it. There you are. Um, what else? Okay, while I've got that on, it's sort of a mix between the red and the green. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow that up. Get this green on here. There's this particular shape that comes round there and comes off the back of this lamp. That's probably too that's probably too light. And fiddle. Okay, get the excess off that. We go into this dark red, which is actually a blue at the beginning. It goes in here. Right, so we're on the lamp now. Right. Make sure that's thick enough and that there and it comes across here so there's this sort of darker area which they call the terminator which is always always amuses those people um, if you'd like to sit at home and do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression in in private then be my guest it helps so yes the terminator is this where there's no direct where there's the least light falling on it. There's light coming from this direction, light coming from that direction, um, which means it's illuminating both sides, but the least of it is landing on the middle. Right, where are we going here? Ooh. See how it works. I think it kind of does. Turn the red down a bit here. Oh, you know what? And turn it up again. Nice, a little bit more light on that, that will give me an area of light there. How's that coming out? A little bit more light. So I'm being careful to mix up 
the paint enough so it doesn't it's not going on streaky it's going on a solid color but there's also a sort of a sort of a quantity of it that um, is agreeable to the surface of the painting how's that looking it's hard to judge really for me personally There's a slightly hazy quality to the top, so I'll pop that in there, the top of the stand. So let's get to the brighter bits. Got some of this here. So again, yeah, there's a shape. We really do something with this. Again, that's got to be even thicker because I've got texture on the on the canvas already. doing it. I think it is. Um, right, let's go into the brightest of the reds. We've got some around here. Still not bright enough. We're going to need more, uh, more yellow in that. Let's take some of that light, some of this red, big dollops of it. So I've got plenty of paint. Stick a bit more yellow in it just to brighten it up. Proper fire engine colour. That's not mixed enough after everything I just said. Hey. All right, this is tricky. So I need to do quite a steady straight line here. So the trick is to hold the brush at the, at the end, not like a pencil. And then rest it on the surface and then just drag it down. Create a nice little edge on that. Where else? Oh yeah, there's that edge there, wasn't there? There's a fair bit of it. Going around there. Anything else? It's tempting. It's tempting to look for more places where. do for that I think. Uh, what else? Uh, oh yes, um, I'll clean that one. I'll go back to this brush. We've got this bluey red. Put the reflection going around here. Wakey wakey. Uh, well, so you know what, we can sneak a bit of that in here as well, into that shadow. Uh, I'm going to have some fun doing the green on this book. Do I still need this greeny brush here? Oh yeah, that was the next thing I was going to do, wasn't it? With the greeny brush. It's a nice green book. Let's really chuck it on there. Just 
just like Ernest would have done. If he'd been a painter. Short, sweet, to the point. Okay, let's go let's mix up into this slightly darker green. Put some of that here. That does it. Okay. It's got to go somewhere else next. So I'll get some of that that bluey black I mixed. Let's put some of this in here. Oh, that works. Be proper th thick paint as well. A bit lighter at the top. Ah, haven't mixed it properly. How's that working? back again. Nice. Let's try that. It's down here. Yeah. That's rather good. While I've got this brush with the brown on it, I can go down to the grey, mix it a little bit with the green, and do some of this sort of design that goes on the cover, and go even more into the black. Again, it's part of the green. And I can put in some of the writing. I don't think anyone will quite get Green Hills of Africa from the marks I'm making, but maybe they'd have had the book before and they'd recognise it. Yeah. That doesn't quite say any stemming way either, does it? But there you go. That hard edge in. Nice. Oh, that's the other thing. Accident, really. I just got a bit lazy there. Okay. What's that doing? Ah, the reflections are quite fun, uh, which reminds me, I also I had that red. Okay, this is where I need somewhere to rest my brushes when I'm not using them. So I have this, which kind of comes in there, right at the top. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell I'm having some fun with this now. Uh, we've got that dark in, some of the blue in.
Okay, where else are we at? Pretty close now. Um, I'll get some of that gold writing on that book and I will use a smaller brush for that. And I'll start off with an orange. Relatively pale, slightly browny orange. And I'll put the highlights on it afterwards. So I guess there's probably quite a bit going on on the top of that. How are we doing for time? Ooh, it's just gone ten two. Ooh. Well, that's quite exciting, isn't it? Well, as far as I'm concerned, this dictionary wasn't simplified enough, so I've <laughs> taken it a bit further than perhaps originally intended. Yeah. I think originally they at least wanted it to be legible, but I mean, who needs it, really? Filigrees, what have you? Same kind of thing on here. A little bit along the bottom. Uh, so let's go into the bright highlights now. A bit more yellow. A whole load of this light colour. Let's see how well this works. Oh, not very well. Even brighter than that along the top. Okay. All right, I might have to do this in two stages. Let's go back to that yellow there. Uh, they want to be brighter and lighter and a bit of reflecting. Mm -hmm. I'm going a bit wonky now, but not worrying about it too much. Hmm. Okay, last few bits. What kind of colour shall we go for for the newspaper? I'm going to get. I've got this green on this brush. Um, oh, we've already got a nice grey on there. That works. Same kind of thing. Oh, there's a sort of peachy colour. Shall work for the sides. Almost, which actually goes well with the with the red that's already outlining it. Um, no, that's not right. Could be patient. Okay, the black ink is not black, but it's not that far off. And it's a kind of a warmer colour than that blue I just mixed. So let's pop this on and see what it does. Okay, is it crosswordy yet? Ah, oh, forgotten where the paint was. Uh, 
and you can tell we're on the puzzle page. Lots of grids and bits and pieces. Oh, it does get bluer there. Use this dark blue. What's that doing? All right. Any thoughts on that? So I should mention, as I usually do that this will be on display at the bean shop tomorrow uh, uh, on Cheap Street Cafe and will be available to purchase for £400 um, so don't be afraid to get in touch if you're interested tell you what I've noticed recently is people are mad keen to buy my work as NFTs. Oh, if only I could just turn them into NFTs, they'd love them. They can be thousands for them. They don't want the originals. I don't know why not. I mean, I presume it's sort of, yeah, it's not the in thing anymore. But uh, yeah, I, I keep, uh, I keep um, sort of going into long conversations with these people about how I might do that. And you know what, I never somehow get around to it. Eventually I will one day, and then all oh, I'll be minted. But in the meantime, you just have to have actual paintings, which is a you know, obviously not as good. But <laughs> there we are. Okay, what's this doing? It's being there. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to loosen up a little bit now. Got lighter bits, brighter bits. How's that coming? extra light <coughs> right there in the middle of the newspaper where it's concentrated Okay, let's go 
back to that grey. Let's do a few of these. That, a bit of that. A couple of these. Some more grey here. This is fun. cheeky bits and pieces just to help put the whole thing together um, so the last bit is the glasses really isn't it we'll just visit that black I mix which is kind of bluey and let's put some of those shapes on Even darker. Let's put a bit of a lizard in there just to give it some density and warm it up a bit. Get this bit right, it will make the whole thing work. Okay, get that grey along the top. few careful spaces. What else is that going to go? A little bit there. A little bit here. Um, where's that white? Let's come back to that. How are we doing for time now? Um, five past. Five past? Bonus, bonus time. Wow. See, I thought this would be quicker tonight, and it turned out to be quite the opposite. Do you, do you think it's the Sudafed? Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I think it's altering the... Altering your time perception. I don't think my time perception needs altering. It's already bad enough. Um, hmm. Okay, well I think that's pretty close to done anyway. It's got a nice bit of structure to it. I'm quite happy with that. Oh, I'll create that slope there. Um, oh yeah, last bit. There's probably these shadows. Make sure they work. So that shadow needs to go there. Or needs to go there. Yeah, don't want to obsess about it, do I? Have I missed anything? I don't think I have. I think that's nice and simple. Um, and uh, structured. There you go. I'm glad you didn't do all the jigsaws. Uh, jigsaws, what am I talking about? Okay, yeah, it's probably Sudafed. 
um, puzzles. Yeah, it's a nice bit of structure in there. If I fiddle with it too much, it will lose the quality it has. Uh, and I'm quite happy with this, so while I have the presence of mind, I'm going to put that brush down. I'm going to sign it in red because obviously it needs some red in that corner. But I'll do it subtly, just like Ennis Hemingway would have done. And uh, yeah, I hope this is a sort of a Hemingway in tribute to painting. Short sentences, keep it simple, don't overthink everything. And um, yeah, if you have to say it twice, it's probably not worth saying. Stop it. Ah, stop fiddling. Well, thank you so much for um, those of you who came along had me on in the background or uh, paid attention even. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it was uh, edifying and interesting. And I hope to see you again next week uh, when, um, yeah, uh, this was meant to be um, a different subject this week, but things didn't work out. So next week I intend to be a bit more demanding and <laughs> uh, get everything together in, in advance and get myself properly organised. Hey! Now from distance, I think that works okay. Let's have a little look at it like this, shall we? Um, oh, there you are. So that's my subject matter. Yes, the adjustable light was probably quite helpful. There, yeah, that's my subject matter. And there's the final painting. Let's just get them to focus. Ah, sorry. Ah, the difficult tripod. There we are. One more focus. There we go. Uh, and if I zoom you in, Hopefully you can kind of see what's happened with the, the texture and the surface and the roughness of the paint. It's meant to be, you meant to unscrew this little handle and, and then the thing moves slowly, smoothly, but no, it doesn't quite do that. You can see the, the thickness of some of the paint in the background and the sort of solid bands of light and colour. There we are. I don't know which way to turn this handle down. <laughs> it's just going to rattle around all over the place. Right, okay. <laughs> That's all a, a camera drop. Yes, exactly. Oh, right. There, stay put. Apologies for that. Yeah, um, so keep an eye out for um, for a post about this going up. I, I will uh, share a proper photo of it. And um, uh, yes, it will be uh, downstairs in Bean Shop. Um, move everything along another week and um, yeah I, I hope to see you next week and maybe I'll announce in advance what I'm going to do. I want to get more musicians in, uh, I want to have a, a bit more social in here, have a few people around uh, so hopefully there'll be a bit more conversation for, to join in with and uh, if you've got any requests or anything you particularly like to see me paint I'd love to hear what it is, uh, no promises but uh, I'll do what the hell I like, that's what this is all about. But, <laughs> but I, I'm always interested to hear ideas 
and to get a conversation started on what we're doing when we're painting and just that that uh, that area of human endeavour and why we're so compelled to pay attention to it. So, yeah, that's that. Are we all set?